Hi everyone, we've put together this little video just to give you an overview of some of the temperature screening solutions that are currently available from Height Vision. Just to give you an idea of exactly uh, the theory behind thermal technology. Every object with a temperature above absolute zero is emitting uh, a detectable amount of thermal radiation. We use thermal cameras to detect that IR radiation and then we convert it into a grayscale value which then allows us to match that to a temperature value using an algorithm which essentially allows us to measure temperature from a distance as well as visualise heat um, that is similar to what you can see here on the right hand side, your stereotypical thermal image where different temperatures are depicted by different colours. The main applications for thermal cameras, um, we, use, we use them quite a lot for perimeter protection, they're really effective for perimeter protection, and we also have used them for temperature measurement for the, uh, the application of fire prevention on places like waste management sites that are looking to detect heat build-ups before it leads to combustion. Um, when we're looking at them today for temperature screen, the accuracy is a far more uh, key element of the solution. So we have adjusted the parameters of the cameras ever so slightly to ensure that they are as highly accurate as they possibly can be, which allows us to use them for temperature screening. The main advantages of using thermal cameras for temperature screening, first and foremost, is the efficiency. You can measure someone's temperature in as little as a second as they walk past the camera. We don't require someone to actually stop. We don't require to actually, if you like, interrupt their flow into a building, the camera will measure that person as they walk past, uh, as I say, in as little as a second. So if you compare that to traditional thermometers, it can take anywhere between 10 to 15 seconds to measure someone's temperature, which ultimately could cause delays if you're looking at a high staff number. And also when you're using a traditional thermometer, there is a safety aspect. Um, you do need to have a, a member of staff administering those checks using a thermometer uh, and potentially having to put them up close and personal with each individual as they come into the building. So with a thermal camera, you can measure people's temperatures without needing to put a staff member in harm's way. So moving on to the temperature screening process that we would recommend that you deploy. So first and foremost, we would suggest that you would set up some form of screening channel. So if you're setting the, the solution up in a, in a large open area, it would be best practice to have some sort of barriers like you can see down in the bottom right hand corner of the image there we're using some temporary tape barriers just to control the flow of how people move towards the camera we need people to to, to walk towards the camera if you like as straight on as possible and um, if you're using the system in a, in a, a narrow corridor corridor or a narrow area and um, it's going to be a little bit easier to do without barriers but if you are using it in a large open area you need to find a way of being able to control how people move towards that camera hence why we're using barriers um, that gives the camera the best opportunity to measure your temperature. It needs to see a nice, flat, uh, a nice clear flat image of your face in order to perform that temperature measurement. So that's why we encourage you to have a, a screening channel. We would also recommend that you put some thought into the actual um, process of dealing with an alarm should one be generated. So if someone enters your building with a, with a raised skin surface temperature, exactly how you're going to react to that. So we would recommend that you have some form of secondary screening process in place um, in order to verify that person's temperature. The cameras that we're using for uh, the temperature screening um, are highly accurate, but they're not quite as accurate as a medical rated thermometer. So uh, it's best practice to verify someone's temperature using a thermometer just to ensure that they actually are showing a high temperature. These cameras are a great tool for primary screening, but as I say, it's always best practice just to use that medical thermometer as a secondary check. Moving on to the solutions now. So the first solution within the range is what we call the professional temperature screening solution. So this is sort of deemed to be the high-end solution, and the reason for that is it allows us to measure someone's temperature at the furthest distance of all the cameras that we have available. So the resolution of the professional camera is 384 by 288. So it's a relatively high resolution for a thermal camera, which allows us to measure temperature anywhere up to nearly nine meters away from the camera. So you can see down in the right hand corner of the screen there, we've got two examples. 
And these two part numbers are related to the two focal length options that are available within the professional range. So it's either a 10 millimeter, which is depicted by the 10P, um, or a 15 millimeter, which is depicted here by the 15P. So in the, the 10 millimeter, we can measure someone's temperature between two to seven meters uh, away from the camera, so it's quite a significant distance from the camera. And if you can imagine the, de the detection area being like a, a cone shape, at the furthest point of that cone, the detection area will be 4.4 meters wide. And on the 15 millimeter camera option, we can measure someone's temperature between 2.5 to 9 meters away from the camera, um, with the furthest point uh, being 3.9 meters wide. So it is quite significant. Uh, detection areas on these on these particular cameras because we've got a, a, a much longer detection range. This is this allows us to install these cameras in a more permanent installation. Um, so, for instance, if you're looking for a, a camera to be installed on the ceiling, um, you can use the professional range for this application. Um, when we look at the the other options within the temperature screening range, you'll find that. Um, ceiling mounting uh, installations isn't, aren't really an option because of the detection distance being much shorter, but with the professional range, with the, the range being longer, we can, we can comfortably get away with that um, ceiling installation. The accuracy on the professional range is plus or minus 0 0.5 degrees Celsius with the camera uh, as a camera only installation. If you're looking to increase that accuracy, we have the option of increasing it up to plus or minus 0 0.3 degrees Celsius uh, by including an additional calibration device, which I'll go on to speak about in a little minute or so. Just as a, a key point at this stage, all of the solutions that we're going to discuss today are designed for indoor installations only. So whether it be the professional range, whether it be the economical range, or the MINMOS, or the metal detector um, solution, they're all designed for indoor use only. Um, and the reason for that is we cannot have any external factors um, such as wind and direct sunlight and so on and so forth. We need to ensure that you've got the cameras installed indoors where we can control the environment, ideally away from entrance doors, which are going to cause um, changes to the atmosphere because wind comes through the front door, for instance. So really uh, as sterile and as stable an environment as you possibly can for these solutions, please. So just an example of the professional temperature screening solution in action, as you can see on the right hand side here, we've got two video streams, one's an optical and one's a thermal. And the reason for that is the cameras themselves are what we would call bispectrum. They've got both a thermal and an opti optical camera built into the unit. And the reason we've got the optical camera here is to allow us to run an algorithm called face detection, which is allowing the camera to pick out someone's face and then tell the thermal camera only to measure the temperature of that person's face, more specifically that person's forehead in order to do the temperature screening. That helps us cut down on false alarms from things like people walking through carrying a hot cup of tea in their hand, or in this particular example, you can see there's a large TV monitor in the background. The camera is not measuring the temperature that's been emitted from that, that um, TV. It's only interested in the, the temperature of the individuals walking past the camera. Next option within the temperature screening range is the economical cameras. So um, really, really great bit of kit. Very, very similar to the, to the professional range. Really, the main difference is the detection distance that's available. So the resolution of the economical range is only 160 by 120. So it's a little bit uh, lower resolution than the professional range, which means that we can only measure people's temperature up to a maximum of three meters away from the camera. Um, but uh, it's, it's more than sufficient for many, many projects. So as you can see down in the bottom right hand corner again here, we've got two examples of the different focal lengths that are available within this range. It's either a three millimeter or a six millimeter. So on the three millimeter device, we can measure someone's temperature between 0 0.8, 1.5 meters away from the camera with the detection width at the furthest point being 0 0.67 meters. And then on the six millimeter device, the detection distance is between 1.5 and three meters with the width being 1.33 meters at the furthest point. Again, the accuracy on this uh, range of cameras is exactly the same, plus or minus 0 0.5 degrees Celsius with a camera on its own, uh, with the option to increase to plus or minus 0 0.3 degrees Celsius with including the black body calibrator, um, which again, I'll move on to just in a second or two. Um, because of this shorter detection distance on the Eco Series, we have to re recommend the installation height of being only 1.5 meters. So ideally, 
Um, that's either going to be on a tripod mount, as you can see within the, the, the image in the centre, um, or potentially wall mounted at 1.5 metres. Um, the reason for that, again, we need to get a really nice flat, clear image of people's face so that we can run that face detection algorithm. If you, if you mount the camera too high, it's going to be very, very difficult for the camera to measure someone's temperature, especially within uh, the restricted sort of 1.5 to 3 metres detection area. Um, on the Eco Series, you could struggle there to, to achieve that detection distance if it's mounted quite high up in a ceiling. With the Eco Range, you've got a couple of added benefits. Um, you've got the choice of either an, uh, a bullet style camera or a turret style camera, which is unique to the Eco Series. And also, you've got built in audio and visual alarms on the Eco Series. So it's got a built in strobe light and also a built in sounder, which is, which is unique to the Eco Series. You don't have that option on the professional range, it's only on the Eco Series. So if someone walks up with a high temperature, it can flash a light and also play a pre recorded message to give that person an, an indication that they've set off an alarm. So just an example of the Eco Series in action. Again, same concept. It's got a thermal camera and an optical camera. So you can see the temperature information on both just above everyone's head. It shows you their temperature. And if someone was to generate an alarm, you can receive notifications in a number of different ways. You can either receive a push notification through to a mobile device. You can receive up uh, receive pop-up notifications on the client software that could be running on a PC. Uh, email notifications. There's, there's a magnitude of different and notification options for these solutions. So um, we can make sure that there's an option for you. I've touched on it a few times now about how we can increase the accuracy of these solutions. So in order to increase the accuracy, we need to include a device called a black body calibrator. What that is, is a, a little device that emits a constant and stable heat source. Um, by placing the calibrator in the field of view of the camera, it allows the camera to constantly reference that set point for a set temperature. Um, the constant calibration of the camera means that the, the accuracy of the, the temperature measurement creeps up by that 0.2 of a degree up to plus or minus 0 0.3 degrees Celsius. So if you are looking for the highest accuracy available on the market, um, you would need to include the black body calibrator within your solution. Other options for temperature screening, you've got the handheld temperature screening camera. So there's a couple of options within uh, the, the, the handheld range. There's the TP21B, which is the unit we can see on the screen in front of us here. Um, and there's also a TP31B, which is the economical series. So the features of the, the TP21B, the accuracy of the temperature measurement is plus or minus 0 0.5 degrees Celsius, with the option of increasing the accuracy to plus or minus 0 0.3 degrees Celsius with the black body calibrator. But because it is a portable unit, there's a little bit more uh, involved with regards to the calibration side of it. Um, it does require a manual calibration every half an hour um, if you're looking for that accuracy on the handheld unit. If you were using it as a static setup that like you can see here on the right hand side, you can just place the, the calibrator within the field of view of the, ha the, the handheld camera and it can perform an automatic calibration every half an hour to, to save you on, on that manual calibration function. Um, the detection distance for temperature screening is 1.5 to 2.5 metres, so you're comfortably uh, within the, the government's two metre social distancing guidelines, um, so you're, you're, you're able to maintain a safe distance when you're measuring someone's temperature. And again, uh, a, a point just to, to reiterate, it's designed for indoor use only, although it is portable, it may encourage people to want to take it outside, um, the temperature screening can only be, the accuracy for that temperature screening can only be ensured in an indoor stable environment only. One slight difference between the handheld options and the fixed solutions is that we don't have the face detection feature within the handheld option. So it's more of a point and shoot type of product. And what I mean by that is in order to measure someone's temperature, you need to make sure the camera is pointing in the right direction. So there's two ways to do it. You can either measure the temperature based on the center point, which as you can probably see in the middle of the, the screen on the left hand side there, there's a little green cross here. So whatever that green cross here is pointed at, it will display up in the top left hand corner there, the center temperature. And the other option is your maximum temperature, which you'll probably have guessed now, is the maximum uh, red cross here that's jumping around the screen. That's just looking for the hottest point within the image. Not necessarily uh, someone's forehead. It could be a hot, hot drink in someone's hand, or it could be a hot radiator on the background. So there's a little bit more um, human interaction required with this camera. So you need to make sure that it's the, it's the right fit for your customer um, to ensure that it's going to be used effectively.
So as I said, there is two options within the handheld range. You've got the TP21B on the left-hand side there. A couple of advantages, max distance for temperature screening, 2.5 meters. Um, accuracy can go up to 0 0.3 degrees Celsius with the black body. And it also has a swappable battery. The battery life on the, on the unit is just over four hours, but you can swap those batteries. The battery clips out the bottom and then you can clip a new one in and carry on as is. The economical version, which is the, the TP31B. Um, the max detection distance for the temperature measurement is just over one meter, but the accuracy for it is set at plus or minus 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. You can't increase it with use uh, of the black body. It's, it's set there at plus or minus 0.5. Battery life on the unit is slightly longer again, just over eight hours, but the battery itself is built into the unit. So if you are going to charge the unit, the whole, the whole unit needs to be plugged in to be charged rather than a swap over battery. Next solution we've got available is the temperature screening metal detector. Um, so this solution uses the eco series turret for the temperature screening. So it's exactly the same features that you would expect to find on the eco turret. Uh, accuracy being plus or minus 0 0.5 degrees Celsius with the option to go up to plus or minus 3 with the black body calibrator. It's still using the face detection feature. It's still got the built-in strobe light and also custom audio alarm that the, the camera can announce if someone's got a high temperature. But you've got the added functionality of having the height vision metal detector as well. So you're getting a security and a safety solution uh, for your clients. The metal detector has a LCD display which shows you four bits of information. It will count the number of people that are going to pass through the archway, so effect effectively as a people counter. It will also show you the live temperature information that's currently being read by the camera, so if there's someone standing in front of the camera, their temperature will be displayed on the screen. And also will show you the number of alarms that have been generated by both the metal detector and by the temperature screening camera. Depending on what type of alarm you generate will depend on how the system reacts. To give you an example here, if someone is uh, showing a high temperature as they walk up to the, the metal detector, you'll see that both sides of the archway illuminate the LEDs to give that person an indication that they should stop and not proceed any further. If that person doesn't have a high temperature, they can pass through the archway and if they were to have some sort of metal material on them, the metal detector will detect that and illuminate the LEDs only in the area in which it detected that metal. So as you can see there, on the left hand side there, there's a metal watch on the left hand wrist and the LEDs are only illuminated in that area to give uh, indication as to, as to where an operator should actually perform a search. So the next solution within the range is the MINMO solution. So the MINMO is a facial recognition access control device. This is a contact-free alternative to tra traditional access control, such as card readers, keypads, fingerprint readers. Um, so it's given you um, an increased security aspect from the point of view that you're not going to be able to um, lose cards or, or pass on a code, for instance. And it's also giving you a safety aspect because it's able to screen your temperature at the same time. Um, so everyone who enters a, a, a particular area can be checked to make sure that they've not got an abnormal temperature before they proceed in. So the system can, can work in a couple of ways. It can be a temperature only uh, screening tool. So it will only open the door to, for someone who's showing a normal temperature. It can be used for the access control functionality that it will only open the door for someone who's on a database and, and also showing a normal temperature. Or it can be used for time and attendance um, so that it can actually clock people in and clock people out at the start and the end of a shift and produce a time and attendance uh, chart to give that uh, person an attendance record for their staffing. The accuracy for the temperature screening is plus or minus 0 0.5 degrees Celsius, so exactly the same as every, every other solution so far. And again, designed for, for indoor use only. You can't have these installed externally just because of that temperature screening functionality. So the next option within the minimal range is the rapid deployment cell screening unit. Advantages of the, the cell screening, first and foremost, it's, a, it's an all-in-one unit. So you pick one part number and you would get that whole unit, the stand and the 10-inch screen. So this would be good for public areas where you're looking to uh, install a, a screening station, uh, whether that be restaurants or offices, where they're looking for a little bit more of a, an aesthetically pleasing um, bit of kit rather than the cameras on a tripod, for instance. Um, the, the, 
Detection distance for the temperature screening on this unit is 0 0.3 to 2 metres and the accuracy is plus or minus 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. It does have exactly the same functionalities in terms of the facial recognition. You can control a door using the facial recognition functionality, um, but it doesn't have the built-in card reader that the MINMO device previously has. So just a look at how some of these solutions can go together. The first solution, if we're looking at the cameras, um, they are IP cameras essentially, so they can get connected to the same network as a PC that could be running our IVMS 4200 client software, which is free of charge, downloadable from the website. And um, that would allow you to do live view of the cameras and also receive pop-up notifications of any alarms that have been triggered. You could also look at including an NVR within that uh, solution, an iSeries NVR, that's going to allow you to record the video and also record any alarm uh, notifications that, that the camera produces so that you can have a retrospective record of anyone's temperatures or any alarms that have been, that have been generated. Solution 3 is very, very similar to Solution 2, but we're using a Deep in Mind facial recognition NVR instead of a standard iSeries NVR. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit more information about the Deep in Mind solution on the next slide, so uh, bear with me on that one. And the last option here is Solution 4, so it's a little handheld unit. That does have a built-in Wi-Fi module, which allows you to either connect it to an existing Wi-Fi network or, connect, uh, or, or create a, a Wi-Fi hotspot from the unit itself. Uh, which would allow you to either connect it to a PC running IVMS 4200 or to a mobile device running our new Hype Thermal app. Both of those solutions will allow you to do live view and also receive push notifications through from any alarms generated by the handheld unit. So the Deep in Mind solution, this gives you the ability to do the temperature screening but is at the same time also doing facial recognition. So as someone enters the building, um, you can have a database of staff members, for instance, saved onto the unit as they enter the building. The system, in the first instance, will try and compare them with that database. If it does make a comparison, it can then record their temperature and associate that temperature with that particular individual. That gives you the ability to then produce uh, an attendance record to show exactly who's entered the building and, and what temperature that person was on a specific day. Okay, guys, so if you've got any questions with regards to our temperature screening products, feel free to ping over an email to presales.uk at hikevision.com and one of the guys can get back to you for uh, your questions and answers. If you've got any sales inquiries, if you've got any projects that are currently ongoing, feel free to send a, an email over to sales.uk at hikevision.com uh, and one of the team will be able to support you with that project. Okay, thanks. I hope you found it beneficial. Stay tuned for any videos that we will release in the near future. Thanks for your time. See you later.